Hey everyone, this is John from Super Geeks again, and today is our Dropbox Part 2 video. So we're going to be going over how to move pictures and files out of Dropbox and onto your computer so that you can then free up space on your phone, uh, in your iCloud account, things like that. We'll also be taking a look at several features of the Dropbox website, which I think a lot of people uh, tend to ignore, but there's some really good features on there. Things like sharing uh, files, uh, sharing entire folders, and even restoring deleted files. So if you don't already have Dropbox on the phone, on your computer, and you haven't seen our Dropbox Part 1 video, uh, here's the link for that. And I'll also put it in the description of the video. So go check that out so you're caught up uh, and we can get started on some of these more advanced features. So on the computer, let's go to the Dropbox icon down here in your system tray. We'll just double click on it and it'll open up your Dropbox folder. And primarily, people use this for the camera uploads like we set up in the in the first video so any pictures you take or any pictures that were already on your phone will will be in this in this folder automatically um, but there's a problem with that in that with a free Dropbox account you get two gigabytes for free so we need to find a way to clear these pictures out so that we can reuse that two gigabytes and free up our iCloud account free up space on our phone. So the way I normally do this is by making another folder somewhere outside of Dropbox and just moving those pictures into it. So if you right click on the desktop and then scroll down to new folder and you can name it whatever you want. Sometimes I'll just name it pictures, sometimes I'll name it uh, Disney vacation if it's a specific set of photos. And this can be anywhere doesn't have to be on the desktop but I'll select all of these pictures in this folder and then I will just drag them into the new photos folder I just made so now this folder is empty the Dropbox camera uploads folder is empty and you'll see that up here uh, where it has where the folder is at this is just on the desktop and anything that has Dropbox to the left of it is going to count against your Dropbox space. Anything outside of that has nothing to do with Dropbox. So we've just freed up the Dropbox camera uploads folder. Uh, even if there was a thousand pictures in there and we take those 1,000 pictures and move them somewhere else, that space, uh, that Dropbox space is now available to be used again. Um, so now what you'll do is you will go to your phone and you will delete every picture that you moved into this photos folder so that your Dropbox account is freed up your phone physical storage is freed up and your iCloud account if you're using an iPhone is freed up a lot of people have thousands of pictures literally thousands of pictures on their phone their hard drive is getting full their iCloud is definitely full and so is that two gigabytes of Dropbox storage and so think of Dropbox the camera upload section of Dropbox not as I have two gigabytes forever that's all I'm ever gonna get think of it like a weight limit on a bridge it's not everything that's ever gonna cross that bridge it's what can it hold at one time so just use it to transfer uh, that's one way to do it anyway is to just use it to transfer from one place to the other so you can reuse that two gigabytes over and over and over again so now let's take a look at some other uses besides the, the camera uploads. Um, let's say you have some documents that you would like access to in different places or that are important to you. Um, here I am. This is just on the C drive under the documents folder where everything normally stays. Word documents, PDF files, things like that. I want this in my Dropbox. I don't want it to live on my C drive. I want to have access to it from my phone, from my other computer. So what you'll do is you'll open the Dropbox folder and My Documents, and you'll just move it to the Dropbox folder. It's pretty straightforward. We're doing the reverse of what we did with the pictures. I'm taking things from my computer and putting them into Dropbox. So now this very important document is accessible to me basically anywhere. I can access it on my phone, my iPad, my laptop. 
and just like any other location on your computer you can make folders so you can organize this as much as you want you can make a documents folder and then put your very important document in it you can make a videos folder you can make a recipes folder you can do a family folder for family photos and things like that uh, then this is all outside of camera uploads. Camera uploads exist really just for that, just to upload pictures from your phone or your tablet that you've taken. And everything else is really up to you on how you want to sort that stuff out. Um, so now let's, let's get out of this stuff. And we're going to go take a look at the Dropbox website. And before I do that, I'm actually going to those pictures back into the camera uploads folder. Remember we moved them into this one. Uh, I'm going to need some photos in that folder for the uh, website website stuff. So now let's head to the website. Uh, go to your internet browser. Uh, if you've been watching any of these videos you should be using Chrome by now. Um, if not it really doesn't matter. I just of course prefer it. So you go to dropbox.com you will sign in to your account. Remember this is the account that you created during the the first setup that we did on the first video. So this is your Dropbox home screen and all of the folders in your Dropbox account will show right here including those folders that I just made on the computer. Um, and if we go over here to the photos on the left hand side this will be every picture in your Dropbox account, not just the ones in your camera uploads folder. So if there are other pictures, uh, like in that family folder, for instance, they will also show up here uh, in chronological order. And so if you left click a picture once, it doesn't open it, it selects it so that you can then go up here and share or come over here and add to an album or delete. And just a note on this, if you delete something right here or anywhere else through Dropbox, it deletes it everywhere. So if I delete it on the website, it deletes it on my computer. If I delete it on my computer, it deletes it on my phone, etc., etc. So let's share these three pictures. All you have to do is click the share button, type in the email address. If you've already shared to that person, they will pop up right there. You can type a message if you so choose. This is my parents' dog, Sophie, and then you hit send, and it's that easy. The person will get an email with a link. They don't need a Dropbox account for this particular feature to work. They can then look at the pictures, save them to their computer, or share them with other people if they, if they want to. And that person has access to that link until you tell Dropbox otherwise. So those three pictures that person can go in and access that link from their email uh, as long as they want to until I tell it to stop working, which I would do right here under links. So if I left click on this, this will show me every picture, every set of pictures, every folder I have shared. And again, there's only two right now. It may be a very long list if you've been using Dropbox for a while, but you can actually go in here and revoke access. So all you have to do is click on this little X for remove shared link. Are you sure you want to remove this shared link? Yes. Uh, this is in case you change your mind about sharing pictures with somebody. Uh, it doesn't do a whole lot to help because they have probably already saved them to their computer. But if you just want to give somebody temporary access to a file, that's, that's how you would uh, revoke that access. So back on the home screen, this icon right here is for sharing a folder. And this is a little different than how we shared those three pictures. So if we click on it, it'll give us two options, create a new folder to share or share a folder I already have. And I already know which folder I'm going to share, so I'm going to select the bottom one and then click Next. And the family folder is the one we're going to do the share with. You'll hit next. Again, it'll ask for email addresses. And this really works best if everybody already has a Dropbox account. If they don't, you might type that in the message down here. Please get a Dropbox account. And then there's a couple of options as far as uh, 
sharing settings up there, allow editors to manage membership. All that means is they can add other people to this share. So personal preference, if you don't want them to add other people, turn that off. If you don't care, leave that on. And you can't actually mess with this unless you're a paid Dropbox member, which I'll talk about more in just a little bit. So we'll hit share folder. They'll get an email, but they will also automatically be added to this. If they already have Dropbox installed on their computer, then anything I put in this folder will automatically show up on their computer under that folder, and vice versa. If they have a picture they want to share with me, they will just drop it into the family folder, and it will automatically show up on my computer under the Dropbox family folder. So it's a really good way to share vacation photos or pictures of uh, the kids and things like that. So if we go in here and we make, for instance, a new text document, uh, be aware that anybody can do anything to these files in a shared folder. They can come in here and edit it, they can delete it, and once again, that change will roll out across everybody's shared family folder. So don't be, don't be rude to your cousin because they might go in and delete all of the pictures out of the family folder. And that brings us to the next feature we're going to look at, which is recovering deleted files. So let's say that the cousin did get mad and they went in and deleted a bunch of stuff out of Dropbox in a shared folder. You can recover those deleted files through the website. There, right there is the show deleted files icon. And before we take a look at it, let's go delete some stuff. So this is that new text document that was in the family folder. So I'm a mad cousin. I'm going to go ahead and delete it. And it's gone. In everybody's Dropbox that had access to that shared folder, it's gone. So we'll also go in to this very important document we were working with earlier. And it's very important but empty right now. And what we're going to do is just make an edit to it. So I'm going to say I changed everything inside this document. I'm going to save it. We'll just pretend it was full of very, very important information prior to that. And so now those two changes are syncing to the cloud. They are pushed out everywhere. So if you click on Show Deleted Files, you can see the little trash can opens up. We'll go into Family. It's a little bit grayed out. If I unclick it, you can see it says the folder is empty. So there are actually no files in the folder. But if I click Show Deleted Files, it will tell me this text document was deleted. If you left click on it, it will bring you to the revisions page. So version 1 was added on this date. Version 2, you can see, says deleted. So you'll find the one that says deleted and then restore the previous version. And on a real document that has many, many edits to it, you know, this list might be 10 things long. So we'll do the one directly below deleted and then that file is there again. So that document is is now back. You probably saw that pop up down in the right hand corner. The file was syncing back to my computer from from the Dropbox website. And if we go take a look at the uh, very important document in our documents folder, we can we can do a very similar similar thing with it on here. So if I click show deleted files, of course it's not going to work because this has not been deleted. What we did was edit that file. Uh, as you can see, I changed everything in this document. Oh my gosh, all my important information's gone. But if I go come down here with the document selected and I click on more, there's an option for previous versions. So if I left click on this, it will take me again to the revisions page. Version 2 was edited and the one right before that is probably the one you're going to want to restore if somebody went in and edited a file or if you went in and accidentally you know messed up the formatting or you're not happy with a draft of a letter you can restore a previous version of it and so now I click on it it's actually empty <laughs> but <clears throat> we'll pretend again that the very important information is back and we have once again saved the day and one thing to note on this uh, revision history 
is that with a free Dropbox account, you get 30 days. So if you delete a file, you have 30 days to come in here and recover it or else it's gone forever. Likewise with uh, the editing of files, the, you can access 30 days prior. So if you made an edit to a file 45 days ago, you won't be able to come in here and restore it to that previous version. Uh, there is Dropbox Pro and Dropbox, uh, the personal upgraded accounts, which are paid services, and they give you a full year of deleted file recovery and uh, edit edit recovery and I think that's about it for Dropbox for us once again if you have any questions at all about Dropbox any cloud services anything technology related don't hesitate to give us a call and please let us know your suggestions for future videos thank you very much for watching